Hi, so carrying on with the theme of what I was looking into last video, where I was looking at start, stop in EC2 instances for cost benefits and stuff. Uh, I kind of thought I'd expand on that a bit. And there's they're like thinking of another alternative way that you may be able to, to get some cost savings. And, and in this case, instead of actually just stopping the instance altogether, uh, we could actually maybe just turn uh, like kind of lower the instance type. So reduce the instance type, obviously saving there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a policy. So if we create a policy, I'm going to create a new policy. We're actually just going to create our own policy this time. And I'm going to call this policy modify EC2 instance type. And I'm just going to copy in the policy. So this is a very simple policy. Uh, it's got to do a couple of things this time. Uh, because we're going to want to be modifying the instance, we have to, like, we can't be assume, assume that the actual instance is stopped already. So we need to be able to stop instances. We then need to be able to wait and describe the instance. So what this does actually is allows us to poll essentially using the wait for in the SDK for saying, is this actual instance stopped yet? And once it's stopped, then we can actually do the modification uh, of the instance type. Sadly, uh, there's not actually a way of explicitly saying you only want this policy to allow um, changes of the instance type. So you do have to kind of give it the whole attributes thing, which is a bit of a pain. And then finally, we want to start the instance up again. So if we create that policy, at that load and then go to roles. We're going to create another role and um, it's similar to last time. We're going to have it so that lambdas can, and then if we just do our modify, we should be able to see our custom policy. Review that. And let's just do modify EC2 instance types and create that role. Okay, so now we've created the role and we've created the policy that is attached to that. We can now go to lambda and create the actual function. So click create function, author from scratch, and we're going to call this modify EC2 instance type. So again, following on from last time, I'm going to kind of take advantage of the events that are able to be passed in to kind of make the function more generic. Uh, so the idea will be is you'll be able to pass in the region, the instance ID, and then also an added one, which is the actual instance type that you want to, you want to change that EC2 instance to. So we're going to go create function. And now we're in here, uh, I'm just going to replace default body with this. So this you can see is a little bit more complex uh, because it's having to do a couple of more things. So what I do first is I pull out the instance ID region and type from the event that we get in, set up the new EC2 instance, and I then essentially kind of go through this promise chain. So stopping all the instance, uh, stopping that instance, waiting for it to be stopped, this is interesting, actually. So you have to bear this in mind, that obviously, that Lambda only allows uh, up to a five minute max time um, of your actual Lambda running. So what you have to do is well, essentially here, we're actually polling and waiting on the instance to stop. So you have to bear in mind, that obviously, if the instance doesn't stop within that five minute window, you are going to have some problems with it. So it may just end up being in stop state. Uh, so it's just kind of, yeah, to bear that in mind with your EC2 instance and its stop procedures. Uh, finally, then within once it's now stopped, we can then modify the instance attributes. So we modify that instance type. Then we start it up and then we just do our callbacks like we did last time, just saying successfully modified uh, the instance ID to that instance type. Uh, in this case, actually, we are going to have to um, increase the timeout. So you can see the default is actually three seconds. I'm going to actually increase this to three minutes just to make sure that it has enough time buffer to actually do the wait for, essentially. Uh, the wait for also, it, it polls, I think, for 10, every 15 seconds uh, up, to, uh, up to 40 times. So with all that done, uh, we then want to actually create some test cases. So you can see again, I've actually got some saved ones already. Uh, so I've got the ability with my instance ID that I'm currently using for my EC2 instance. So you can see here we're running a T2 micro. Um, I've just set this up so we're able to switch between that and a nano. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that up and I'm actually going to save and test converting this to a nano. So you'll see this is going to take a little longer because this is the wait for instance stopped. So if I just go over to the EC2 instance and refresh, you can see now that it's actually instructed the EC2 instance to stop. So all we have to do now is just wait for it to stop. Okay, you can now see that it's been stopped and that it's now been converted into a nano and that has been started up. And you can see here now, so execution result succeeded and we've modified our instance to a T2 nano and it took about just over a minute. 
So yeah, so we, we've now got these two, so I could also switch it back to a micro instance, which I'll just do now. So let me just change that back to a micro. And we go back here and you can see it's stopping and it will make it back into a micro instance for us. So again, we can do this manually now, which is great, but let's automate this process so we can actually take advantage of it on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's go to CloudWatch and let's go to events, event rule, sorry. And we're going to make a schedule and we're going to use a cron expression again. And I'm going to use the same cron expression that I did last time, which is every day at 6.30 in the morning, I would like to modify the, the EC2 instance type. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to now uh, constant JSON text, paste this in, and you can see we've got the region, the instance ID, and now obviously the instance added instance type. So we can specify that we want it to be promoted back up to a T2 micro at this time. So we can configure that. I'm going to call this switch development server to t2 micro okay and then again similarly we're going to do that and at 6 30 in the evening i'm going to modify the instance type and i'm going to instead of making it keep it as a, as a micro i'm going to make this a nano now so configure that and then go switch development server to t2 nano okay and yeah so this will now in the mornings promote it up to a t2 micro and then in the evenings promote, uh, like downgrade it to a t2 nano so it's doing some cost savings there uh, obviously there will be a bit of downtime uh, where you know you're stopping the instance and then restarting it and everything but if it's something like a development server you know you can kind of take that hit it's not that bad uh, but this allows obviously throughout the day you can have like full load with maybe many people working on the development server or you wanting to do full like tests etc and then in the evenings you want to keep it running for maybe doing some scheduled tasks or something so yeah i hope that helped again uh, kind of go for another example uh, all of the all the code snippets and everything will be down below in the in the description so yeah till next time goodbye